What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Pose Season 2, Episode 3. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hope you like this video. So we start off this episode with <clears throat> Miss Angel doing her interview. She's made it into the final round. There are only five contestants left in the new face um, that was um, being sponsored by Ford um, Model Agency. And of course, she's, you know, Mr. Ford has taken an interest in Miss Angel. However... Um, Angel's doing her interview and she does pretty good, you know, she's a little sassy, you know, but I thought she did pretty good. Um, you know, at the end they were like, okay, thank you. And she said, wait a minute, you didn't ask me why I want to be, you know, the face of the new face for 1990. And, um, they said, okay, well tell us why you want to be. And she went on to explain and everything. Um, but ultimately she did not get chosen. And, of course, she's disappointed. She lashes out at Blanca. Blanca always ready to go cut somebody out. She said, I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. You great call uh, Miss Ford, the head of the, the, the top modeling agency in New York, and cuss her out because she ain't pick your baby. Girl, go sit down somewhere, Miss Blanca. She means well, though. You know, she definitely means well. Um, and, of course, Angel is disappointed. And, and, I mean, who wouldn't be? You need a moment to process that. You get your hopes up. I mean, it's down to five people. You, out of thousands of women you're down to five and you know that you're the only one that looks like you um you know that's not that blonde hair blue eyed you know cut out of a of a model and so we see her and I, let me tell you something poppy let me tell you something poppy you ain't gonna make me cry every damn episode okay you're not gonna do it that's two weeks in a row that i didn't shed a tear over you poppy you ain't gonna do it you ain't gonna keep doing it now, with that being said and the other thing about Poppy, Poppy has such an insight. He's so freaking smart and he understands people. And you know, the other thing about that I love, and we'll see it later on in the episode. The other thing I love about Poppy is that he accepts people as they are. He protects his heart. He protects himself, but he accepts people as they are and says, hey, this is who you are. And I know this is who you are. And I accept that that's who you are, but you're not going to fuck me up in the process. I like that about him because see, a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't separate understanding how somebody is and 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 loving them anyway but just making sure that you protect yourself in the process that's such a, a insight of um insightful excuse me way of looking at life anyway with that being said um We see her and Poppy talking. And of course you know that she's talking about being disappointed and everything and they have this moment where they're looking at each other and she kisses Poppy. And Poppy sort of hesitates at first, but then they they kiss. And, you know, she was like, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was like, oh, no, no, no. I've been waiting on this since I met you. He was like, I know. You know, he said, you, you know, you're the type of woman, I, I, I you, you're what I want. You're what I need. And she said, well, okay, let's go get a room. He said, no, 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 no. He said, we're going to take this slow. He said, let me take you out on a date. And it was so sweet, you know, again, he was, and he's letting her know, look, you are who I want. And I know that you're who I want. And I've been wanting you for a long time, but I'm not, we, we ain't gonna rush into nothing either. We're gonna take this nice and slow. Um, honey, then we see Miss, Miss Electra. Electra's doing her thing down at the, at the Hellfire Club. She's got her regular Pete then came through and... Of course, uh, Pete doing his drug thing again. He got this new this new piece he gave her that goes over the face, and she can open up an airway and let air come in, and you know, stuff, you know, you know, play them games, the 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 air game, you know, where you can get enough air to breathe and then close it up and all that. So you know, he's getting high, and she told him, she said, "Look, last time you were here, I gave into my weakness for that money." But I don't do drugs and I don't condone drugs. And he was like, look, he started flashing that money again. And Electra said, I tell you what, okay, you're going to get high. I'm adding $300 on top of the $350 that you already given me. Now, remember, this is $1990, $300. It's still good money, but add a little bit more to that. So, you know, she making damn near $1,000 off of just him in one night, you know, um, just because she letting him get high. So... They get him all strapped up. He's all, you know, I don't know the names of all the different apparatuses, but he's strapped up, you know, arms and legs, and he's got the face mask on. And she opened it up. You know, she said, can you breathe? He said, yeah, I'm good. He said, I'll tell you what, come back in about 20 minutes and give me, so we can give time for the drugs to really work, so I can really go. 
I can really enjoy it. So, you know, Electra was like, all right, it's your money. You know what I'm saying? If you won't waste 20 minutes and doing nothing, that's fine. So she goes into the lounge. Now, I personally think, hold on now. I personally think she was gone longer than 20 minutes, but it really don't matter. Because, you know, they showed her reading a magazine and filing her nails and making a cup of tea. Now, you can't do all that in 20 minutes. 20 minutes is not that long. But neither here nor there. She goes back into the room and he's not responding. You know, she's doing the whole, are you ready to get your beating and all of that? And he ain't saying nothing. And she was like, answer me, do something. Nah, let me know, you know, you ready. He doesn't move. And you could tell he's kind of slack. She takes that mask off and he has asphyxiated on himself, which unfortunately, you know, we know that that's what happened with Jimi Hendrix and Jonas Joplin and Mama Cass. Like, unfortunately, it happens when people drink too much or, or indulge too much and then they throw up and then they asphyxiate themselves. And of course, the, with the mask on and the way he was laying, it really wasn't nothing he could do had he, you know, he couldn't get it out, you know, because the mask was on. Had the mask not been on, he probably would still be alive because he could just kind of turn his head to the side, even being strapped up like that. But he couldn't. So, of course, Electra loses it. And who's the first person she runs to for help? Blanca. And, you know, of course, Blanca being Miss Goody Two-Shoes, Blanca's like, call the police. Electra's like, are you crazy? She said, do you do you understand what's going on here? She said, it doesn't matter whether it was an accident or not. A man is dead. Under my watch, I'm a transgender woman. Do you really think the police are going to listen to anything I got to say? And Blanca is like, just trust me. You came here because you trust me, right? Just trust me. And Electra was like, honey, I'm not trusting you to call the police. So Electra runs out. Blanca follows her. Who's the second person? The second person Electra runs to. Candy. Who in the world is texting me like that? Uh, anyway, runs to Candy. So um, Candy's down to the bar, down to the, the strip club, honey. She's getting her, she's on the pole. And they get her off the pole with money, of course. And she tells Candy what, what happened. And Candy was like, are you crazy? <laughs> she said, call the police. She was like, are you crazy, really, Blanca? Like, you really you really are little Miss Goody Two Shoes. So Candy is like, look, I don't know what the hell you want me to do about this. I mean, this is crazy. So they finally go back and forth. And finally, Candy was like, well, look, I might know somebody that can help you out, but it's going to cost you. Long, Electra's like, whatever, let's go. Now, mind you, she running around in her damn mink coat where she still got her dominatrix outfit on underneath, honey, and she got the mink coat on. Mind you, the man is still dead down to the room. The good thing is that they're private rooms and nobody got the key but Electra to get into the room, but he's still down there dead. So then Candy gets dressed and Candy ends up taking him to the woman that botched her up last year with the, um, with the fake silicone, right? She almost died. Candy said, look, we know you know how to handle things like this. Take care of it. You know, we need your help. And, of course, she played coy until Electra stopped flashing that money. Then all of a sudden it was, huh. No, mm -mm, rewind, rewind, rewind. That's not who they went to next. Candy took them to another friend of hers who's transgender who um, might be able to help them. And they went back to Blanca's house and they had a conversation. And... They were still trying to figure out what to do. And, of course, Blanca is still like, call the police. If we explain what happened. And the transgender woman told them, she said, look, let me be, let me just go and let you know my situation. And she told them a story about last year. Um, situation happened to her last year where she had been, she was, you know, turning a trick. And her, the John ain't like how she was doing it. And they ended up getting into um, altercation. The police rolled up. The man is whooping her ass. And they end up getting into a conversation. I mean, um, the police come up. The police take the man's word for it that he was just giving her a ride and he didn't know and she tried to rob him. She gets arrested, goes to Rikers Island. And she told, um, and she told um, Electra, she said, look, and Rikers, you ain't trying to go to Rikers Island either because once I got to Rikers Island, I was beat up and then, and then one of the guards pimped me out. Um, now here's what I don't understand and y'all correct me. And this is again, and no way to be disrespectful because a lecturer has had the, um, reassignment surgery, would they, and I mean, this is 1990. So I know today when I worked at the jail, there would be, they would be put in isolation, transgender men and transgender women. 
um, they will be put in a separate ward in isolation, depending on the size of the facility. I work with the youth detention. So we're talking about children, but we would have um, transgender women come in um, with weaves and things like that. And they had to take it out and they had to be with the, they had to be with the boys, you know, they had to be with the girls, but by her having reassignment surgery, I'm wondering where they would have put Electra. Again, this is 1990. So I don't know, but moving on. And again, if y'all do know, put in the comments again, no, I ain't trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to understand. So they get to talking or whatever. And that's when Candy finally said, look, I know somebody that might be able to help, but it's going to cost you. And at that point, Electra told Blanca, lead her room. She said, look, I know this is your house, but I'm your mother. Go to bed. And Blanca tries to talk Electra out of it. And Electra says, look, what I don't want, I've already involved you too much. You can't, you ain't got the stomach for this. This, You ain't about this life. And I got to do what I have to do. Because, you know, Blanca was like, you ain't about this life either. She said, but I got to do what I have to do. Like, I got to handle this. You don't have to have no parts of it. I don't want you involved. I want you to go to bed. You don't need to know what happens next. And so she, you know, she, a Blanca leaves. And that's when they go to the lady with the silicone. And again, they, like I said, they talked to her into helping them. <sighs> they move the body, honey. She takes the suitcase. They put that body in the suitcase. You know, rigor mortis and set in now. They put the body in the suitcase. They take the suitcase back to um, Electra's apartment. The woman leaves. They think the woman ran off with her money. She comes back with lie and all these other tools. And what they're going to do is they're going to cover the body in lie. So it will cover up the smell. They're going to cocoon the body, sew them up real good as a tarp. And then they're going to put the body inside of a trunk and leave it in Electra's closet until the story blows over and they can find some way to dispose of the body. Honey, that was a whole CSI moment, okay? When it showed them, it was Candy, Electra, and the um, the silicone lady. And it showed them going through the whole process and everything like that. I said, you know, it's a whole lot of people involved in this whole situation for it to stay. It ain't gonna stay a secret long because there's too many people that know what's really going on. But, Neither here nor there. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Now, while all of this is going on, we have um, Angel and um, Poppy. Now, Angel has started acting a little bit funny around Poppy. And again, this lets you know what Poppy has his insight. He's sulking, but he doesn't have an attitude. And Blanca is like, what is going on with Poppy? He's been sulking these last couple of days. What's going on with him? And we also find out, remember... This season fast forwarded two years. So we find out that in the two years, uh, Poppy then got his GD. He stopped um, selling drugs and he actually has a real job working at um, a dealership or something, they said. So Poppy's doing really, really well. Um, I don't understand why Poppy ain't helping pay the rent because Blanca said anybody helping pay the rent but Electra. But if Poppy got a job, Poppy needs to be giving up money. But anyway, that's another conversation. So Angel was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting funny? He said, I'm not acting funny. He said, you've been the one acting funny ever since I asked you out on a date. You've been the one acting funny. He said, but it's okay. I, you know, I'm going to let you figure it out. And again, he's just so, Ugh. so she says, um, I'm scared. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I, I don't want things to change between us. We have such a good friendship. I just, I'm scared. I'm scared of fucking it up, basically. And Poppy was like, look, that's why I said, you know, he was like, I've always loved you. You're the one I want. And, you know, let's make, let's do this. Let me take you out on a proper date. Let's go out to somewhere really nice. Let's do this for real. And they kiss again. And Blanca is like, because oh, she ain't know what's going on. She said, oh, my goodness. So Angel is getting all excited, honey. She's getting ready for her date. She's figuring out what outfit to wear. And Damon, whose name I couldn't remember last week. And Damon is telling her, look, you got this. That man, you know, like. And and she was like, well, what's wrong? You know, what, um, you're not acting like you're excited. And he was like, look, I love me some poppy. And that's when we found out he had done all this, gotten himself together. He said, but Angel, you are beautiful. You can have anybody you want. I just don't want you to feel like you, you are settling. It's kind of how I took what Damon said. And remember, Damon is on this whole live for you kick after he done broke up with Ricky last week. And, um, while she's trying on different outfits, the phone rings. It's Miss Ford calling her in. 
Come to find out, she didn't win the competition. And Miss Ford told her, she said, you know, your sass was a little bit much for the judges. I like it. But they were a little eh, turned off by it. She said, but I tell you what, I got a client who's not happy with the models I sent. He said he wants something different, a little exotic. And I know that that can be you. She said, you ever heard of Wet n' Wild? Now, anybody from the 80s and 90s know Wet n' Wild. I know Wet n' Wild for their fingernail polish. You can tell I love fingernail polish. And I know them. They used to have the best fingernail polish with the sparkles and the different colors. And I used to like their lipstick. I know all about Miss Wet n' Wild. And, of course, so does um, Angel. She gets excited. She ends up and um, you know, she said, well, when, you know, when do they want me? She says, you're already late. So she sends her over to the photo shoot. And, of course, Angel is beautiful. Oh, she looks so beautiful. And she is the only one there with dark hair, with curly hair that's a little brown. The rest of them are, you know, the 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 the, the white blonde hair, you know, models. And she looks gorgeous. And she realizes after a while, she realizes what time it is. She's supposed to be meeting Poppy at nine o'clock. It's already nine thirty. No, whatever. It's seven o'clock. It's seven thirty. Whatever. She's late. And she tells the photographer, "Look, I gotta go. I, you know, I have I have something to do. I have to go." And he said, "Look," he said, "You're booked until nine o'clock." And so he said, I tell you what, you can leave. He said, but you got to make a decision. Is it going to be, are you gonna, is it going to be your social life or are you going to be a superstar? And so, of course, Angel stays. Not only does Angel stay, honey, Angel ends up partying with the models afterwards and hanging out at the club. And she done met Isaac Maserahi and all these other people. And poor Angel is standing outside in this nice suit with, a, with, with some flowers, honey. He's standing outside the restaurant. They were going to this really nice restaurant. Um, David was trying to figure out how in the world they even got, but how he get reservations to this restaurant is so nice. And so Poppy ends up coming home while Angel is telling Blanca and Damon all about her night. And because, you know, the house of Evangelista now is just down to the four of them and telling her all about, you know, telling them all about it. And she's all excited and she runs up to Poppy. And at first I thought Angel was going to do that bullshit, like pretend like she didn't stand him up and, and he shouldn't be mad at her. But she did apologize. And she told him, you know, she said, look. And she explained what happened. And this was it. Poppy said, look. He said, let me explain something to you. He said, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I don't want anything but the best for you. This is what you work for. This is what you want. He said, but I ain't going to lie. You hurt me. He said, you hurt me bad. He said, but let me tell you something. I'm the man for you. And you don't see it right now because you got your eyes focused on other things. He said, but you're going to figure it out one day that it's me, that I'm the one. He said, and I love you. I've loved you since I met you. I know you're the woman for me. He said, you're going to figure it out one day. I said, you know what, Poppy? And I can't even do that scene justice. You're going to have to just go watch it. I can't because he did it. He broke that thing down. I said, okay, Poppy. He did that thing. So Blanca meets up with Electra. And Electra is like, what you want? What's going on? She said, look, it's been a few days since that whole situation went down. I ain't heard from you. I ain't talked to you. What's going on? And she's, you know, and of course, Electra trying to play hard. Like, what? What? Electra, I mean, pa, uh, Blanca said, look, we know you a bitch. That's fine. But even you, as hard as you are, I know you, Electra. And Electra told her, she said, look, I have nightmares. I don't sleep good. It haunts me. She said, I killed a man. She said, a man died. That's a man that had a family. That's a man that had a life. I'm not happy about it, but I also know it's what I had to do because there's no way in the world that the police would have believed me and sided with me. White man from Wall Street versus a black transgender woman. Who's going to win that? She said, but his body is, it belongs to me. It's in my closet. It's mine now. My responsibility." And come to find out, Miss Candy telling everybody what the hell happened. And um, Electra was like, what? She said that. She was like, that bitch. Is, she said, but look, half the people don't believe her. And the half that do believe her know that you did what you had to do. So, you know, the community basically is going to protect Electra. And she said, look, it went from being on the front page to the, now it's on the back of the 22nd page. So, you know, the story is blowing over. Unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. But they had a moment, you know, they had a moment. That damn Electra, I tell you what, like I said, the minute she got in trouble, she went straight to Blanca. Um, and it is what it is. And it's unfortunate. It's a it's a sad story that I'm sure, I'm sure it's based in some truth, honey, because we know that um, Ryan Murphy 
get you some truth. But it was a really, really good episode, you guys. Once again, out the park. I love it. And that damn Poppy, like I said, Poppy, you ain't going to make me cry every week. You ain't going to do it. I'm going to tell you that shit right now. Okay? Anyway, um, at the end of the episode, they're walking through um, the grocery aisle. They had to like the CVS or whatever, Dwayne Reed. And who is on the cover of the Wet n' Wild advertisement? Angel. So we'll see where this goes, you guys. Happy for Angel. Happy for the House of Evangelista. And I will see y'all next week. Have a good evening. Peace.